What is up, friends? I'm on here to talk about my favorite topic in the whole world, dance and music. And we're going to be a little bit uh, to narrow that because that could take us in a lot of different directions. I like a lot of different types of dance and a lot of different types of music. But today I'm inspired to specifically talk about uh, Cuban music and salsa and all, the whole family of salsa. But we're going to really kind of narrow this down and we're going to focus a little bit more on timba. And here I just want to tell you my inspiration and a few caveats, a few like big picture pieces before I go further. Number one, this video is inspired in part by two of my favorite dancers to see online. I wish I could see them in person, but they're far, far away. And that is Elaine and Katarina. They posted a beautiful like 20 minute long um, video today on Instagram. Basically, as much as I could follow, because I can follow the Spanish and to a lesser extent the French, but conceptually follow, um, breaking down like sort of how to appreciate and connect with and the big picture macro or organization of a, a timba song because there is a pattern and rhythm um, in terms of the overall flow right the way the music builds the feeling at the beginning of the song versus the feeling about two and a half minutes in is pretty predictable and how it culminates and it made me think to share something because I've wanted to for a long time um, but what I feel like uh, people who are at a fairly advanced level in dancing, especially if they're dancing to Cuban music, is that they really take for granted that those of us who didn't grow up listening to Cuban music, they take for granted that we can feel and hear the clave rhythms of that music on which all of the other feeling and intensity and breaks and sort of overall organizing logic of the music is, is based. And the truth is, at least speaking for myself as a Westerner, I'm, I'm from San Francisco, California, I'm not Cuban, didn't grow up listening to Cuban music, uh, have no connection with this music, started dancing as an adult. I will tell you that I was struggling just to find the one for a long time, let alone to hear and let alone to feel the clave rhythms. Now, I just want to say a few things about this. Number one, I'm going to speak very generally, and I'm self-conscious of the fact that I'm being general and incomplete, but I want to do so for the purpose of advancing a larger topic. So when we talk about clave rhythms, there are multiple. They share some qualities, and some of this will apply to across the board, but mostly we're talking about what we think of as song clave and rumba clave, which is the rhythm that would go with like wawanko. And if you're not familiar with those terms, those are at least two of the underlying ancestor rhythms that gave rise to things like modern salsa and modern cha-cha-cha, son and montuno, and, and danzon. And I'm not going to go further because my next caveat for you is I'm not a trained musician and I'm not a particularly highly trained professional. Well, I'm certainly not professional, but I haven't paid for a lot of professional dance instruction either. So I'm coming to you as someone, hopefully what I can offer is actually based on that exact fact that I'm not particularly expert. I'm self-taught, very Montessori over here. And it's because I used to not be able to hear or feel these things. And because now I relatively can on at least a novice level that I can hopefully extend my hand to people who are similarly situated because I, as a social dancer in the Bay Area, I know how many dancers love this music and passionately want to connect with it and also how desperately not connected they are to it. And I know because I dance with you <laughs> and I'm really, really grateful and super not arrogant, super not arrogant. Okay. This is not supposed to sound presumptive. I am not claiming expertise. I am not claiming infallibility in terms of like what I can identify in the music. But I know I've achieved a certain amount that I didn't used to have. And it's that distinction that I feel that I know from dancing with my friends and my amazing, beautiful social cohort here that a lot of us aren't able to feel. And that is because we didn't grow up listening to it. And people who could otherwise, who did grow up listening to it, look at us like, can you not see color? Like literally, they it's so in them, they don't even know where to start to break down explaining it for us. And I, I'm sure that there's someone that can, but no one has ever, ever could explain to me in a way that helped my brain figure it out. I had to find it on my own. I had to develop my own like reverse engineering skills to feel clave. So five minutes in, what are we talking about? Salsa, all salsa, to a greater and lesser extent, is 
supported by two fundamental rhythms, or at least one fundamental rhythm and a timing. Okay, the timing is just classic metronome timing. How fast is that song moving through space? That is the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight that you will hear bleated out at you like a metronome um, in any social dance class. And that's a really important thing to be able to sense and feel. That's 101 introductory level. Can you wrap your your sensory nervous system around the speed at which this sound is moving through space at you? And can you organize it into uniform increments that then become sort of the grammar of how you and another person are going to dance to it, right? You have to be able to get that. And it's not a given because some of the music is fairly complex and polyrhythmic. And so it can be a little disorienting to even find like the timing of the song. But that's what the one, two, three, four is. It's the timing of the song. And in salsa, you know, without, again, without going off on a huge tangent, we have people who like to dance on one. We like to, we have people who dance on two, which is dancing on one, but with different emphasis, right? It's like one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, right? Anyway, it's just like, that just annoys me. <laughs> but either, anyway, that's a side tangent. Um, and the biggest defining difference, honestly, between those is going to be emphasis and style, right? Those two camps of dancing on salsa are more stylistically different than they are timing different, right? And we can argue that like dancing on two coordinates with clave a little better for some specific reasons that I'll get to, but they're not dancing on song timing, which is dancing on two, three, four, and holding one. Why does that matter? Because the other rhythm that underlies salsa, and again, I'm saying salsa, it's salsa is like a huge freaking umbrella. Okay, we're going to get the theme, but we're going to get back to theme in a minute. But big picture umbrella salsa is all organized around the clave rhythm. And if you're not familiar with it, I don't have a chart for you. Look it up. But it essentially falls if we were to force it into the metronome timing, which is already a little grotesque because this is an Afro rhythm that, you know, wasn't initially recorded. Like it wasn't written down what it was supposed to look like. And you can go to Wikipedia and you can look at the debate as to like, where's that note supposed to fall on the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight meter, whatever you call it, because I'm not a musician. I don't know what you call that. But there's debate over approximately where it falls because it's that it's a little bit, uh, you know, it's not bound to that structure. But salsa is. Salsa is bound to the clave structure. And if we were to approximate it, and this is why this is useful, it's important to know it ascent, it's not symmetrical on that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here's what I mean. The approximation for it is one, two and a half, four, two, three or reverse, two, three, one, two and a half, four. And that's for song clave, probably not rumba clave. I have no idea. I wouldn't even want to venture a guess. Someone, there's plenty of musicians on YouTube who could tell you where that falls, or roughly where that falls. But the moral that you want to take away is that it's asymmetrical, number one. It's not going to fall two, three over here, two, three over here. It has different emphases over the course of that timing structure that you as a dancer are aware of to interact with your partner, you know, on your basic step, whatever. And because it doesn't fall exactly on the notes, there's that two and a half in there, for example. And because there's open spaces where it's not hitting, it has, it creates an undulation feeling, okay? It's not just straight march timing linear. A few things to think about. So that's your big picture. All salsa is undergirded by these two rhythms. Arguably, it's really only organized around clave and the metronome timing or the, the sync is just like another thing that coincides. But the instruments and the vocals and the way the music is written is by design interacting with the clave. What do I mean by that? It means it's not necessarily playing it. You don't necessarily, you're, well, you're usually, you're not stepping to it. And it might interact with it in different ways. Maybe it's playing, maybe, you know, in almost, in most songs, for just a few examples. In a lot of songs you'll hear, um, like Barbara Rosines, you'll hear a lot of piano hitting clave, right? Even a little bit obliquely, but you'll hear the piano hitting clave because their piano is so off the hook. You'll hear vocals hitting clave, 
right? On a lot of songs, oftentimes at a certain point, there will be a choral, you know, a chorus, uh, especially towards the end of the song when it starts really heating up. You will hear a chorus that is singing, hitting the clave rhythm. If you know, if you know that's what they're doing, you will hear um, the bass often playing clave. But you also hear fragments. You'll hear something coming together hard on that four, which is very common. You'll hear something something really hitting that two, three, two, three, right? You'll hear the emphasis of the instruments and or the vocals converging around points in that clave. Or like I said, leaving sort of hollow pregnant pauses in the way the clave orients. So if you're not able to connect with the clave, you're missing all of that. You're probably going to feel patterns, but it's, a, I mean, I was trying to think of analogies and it reminds me of having food without salt or food without fat. You can have lots of good ingredients, but it is not congealed or like watching something that's not in color. And you're just like, it's, there's a lot that's, um, black and white can be beautiful, right? But like, you're missing a certain vibrancy. And, um, and that's a damn shame because that's what brings the music to life. And here we are all in COVID and not able to dance with each other, which makes me so fucking depressed. <laughs> but one of the cool things is there's a lot we can do as social dancers to practice in this off season. All right, in, indefinite off season. One of those things is we can practice things like our basic movements, like our, you know, um, the basic individual partner movements, which I would love to make a video about. So maybe that'll be next. But first thing, we can do a lot of music practice. Because when anyone comes to me that wants to, whether it's bachata or salsa or anything, those are really my two major, major things I dance. The first thing I say is, here's my playlist. Just immerse yourself in the music because the last thing you want to do is learn steps that you then just march on top of timing. That is the fastest way to hollow out and make your dance vapid and irrelevant. I'm using strong language, but no one wants to fucking dance with your ass just marching on timing. I'm being harsh, but it's because I want to inspire you to get fired up to put in some work on this. So let me tell you a little more of my story. I, I think I mentioned in this take of this video, I've tried a few times, that originally I couldn't even hear like where one was. So please know, like I'm a normal Western human being who was totally disoriented in this music. And I'm extremely grateful. I have no bona fides. I can't, I didn't win any fucking championships or haven't taken part. But I have heard from a number of Cuban dancers. And I'm so immeasurably honored by this that they appreciate the way I feel the music. Now, they might just be flattering me, and I'm a huge skeptic, so I don't have, like, references. You don't have to trust me. Maybe some of my Cuban friends will chime in and be like, no, for real, listen to her. She's she's not making this shit up. Uh, I might ask some to do that. Vouch for me. Give me some cred credentials here. But what I can say is I, I have some experience with this, and having not had experience with it, I'm hoping to lend a hand to people who struggled as much as I did. Quick story, I was dancing at El Valenciano, not oh, a long ass time ago now, but it, not long before COVID. And it was a, um, there was a Los Van Van song playing. And towards the end, I was dancing with a very, very beginner dancer. Bless him, very beginner dancer. And had a beautiful time dancing with him. And at the end, I was totally back leading him on the clave rhythm just for fun because the dance had kind of stopped. And he was like, oh, what is that? What is that? Because he could tell that I was doing something with the music. He could sense it, but he couldn't engage it. So I'm hoping to reach, and I and he wanted to. He's like, and when I told him it was the clave, he was like, oh, I've heard of that, but I don't really know much about it. And the way dance is taught sort of en masse, at least in the Bay Area, is like group classes, rela teams, and rela classes. And, you know, it's not just timba, like all dance is sort of mass produced social dancing like this. And so we end up becoming very mechanized because that's easy to teach. And that's not to fault the instructors. It's just impractical to teach some of this in mass scale. And until people want it, it's unrealistic. No one's going to do like, well, 
Gary Johnson, credit to him, would have his like clave musicality training classes. But, you know, compared to the mass production of social dancers elsewhere, it doesn't get a lot of airtime. It doesn't get a lot of pull because people don't know what they're missing and they don't dance with themselves. So they don't know how much <laughs> it would be benefit to everyone that wants to dance with them if they would put some time into this. So I'm here to tell you, if you have time in COVID and you want to learn to appreciate and feel the clave so that you can connect with the music so that you can go and watch Elaine and Katarina's video and be like, oh yeah, I hear the way those mu the music drops. I hear the way the music breaks. That is in me. I'm not just memorizing and waiting for that sound. I feel the overall coherency of the music. Then I want to help you do that. And I'm hoping that these videos help you. Final thing about that. Um, nothing mm -mm, to say about that. The coherency, the coherency. Oh, this is, we have to remember, that this is music written for dancers, right? This isn't jazz. Like, it's not like experimental. I'm sure there's some jazz that's for dancers, but it's not experimental. It's not meant to be like um, random. There is a rhythm and a pattern. So that's by design. And if you're not tapping in to the principal rhythm and instead you are just marking time, please believe there's a lot of juiciness that you're leaving on the table. And I don't just mean for your dance partner. I mean for you. <laughs> like you want to salt your damn food. You want to add some fat and sauce to that meal. So if it would just help you enjoy, I just can't tell you how much I love Timba. I, I have goosebumps. I love it so much. I miss it so much. I could get emotional about how much joy it brings me to savor this music the way I do. So I just want to be able to share some of the way I've come to access it. All right. So that's what this video is going to be about. Next video is going to be me showing you a little bit more about what I did to overcome the crazy frustrating impasse I felt for so long when I couldn't hear the clave. Because if I didn't mention it already, you know, I think I was saying originally I couldn't even find the one. And I certainly couldn't feel clave. And my instructor, bless him. I mean, I paid him a lot of money for private classes and he would clap the clave for me while we did other, you know, things. He would, he wanted, he even brought in his like bongo to like, you know, play, uh, like, it, you know, I don't know if you know if it was a bongo. I don't think, whatever. He brought in a tambor. He brought in a drum. <laughs> Again, I'm fucking ignorant, but he brought in a drum on which to play this rhythm. He brought in, brought in his actual clave, which is the wooden instrument or the originally wooden instrument. And he would play it for me and I would hear it when he played it right? Like I could tell he was hitting, I could hear that it was syncing up with the music in different ways. But when he'd stop playing, it would disappear. And I would go and I would listen to that same song on my way home and it would be gone. So I'm here to help you if you're someone like, yeah, okay, that kind of sounds like me. If you're just like, I've been banging my head against a wall and I continue to just like not really feel it because ultimately you've got to feel it. Uh, maybe my, the way I, the way I overcame it will help you. All right, 20 minute video. I'm gonna put this on my YouTube page right now. I hope it helps someone. Much love to my dancers.